Welcome back to another section of the Tiny Living Course. Today we are going to talk a little bit about finances and budget. Specifically, we'll discuss how much it costs to uh, buy and build out a van or purchase a converted van. And then we'll also talk a little bit about budgeting and what you can expect when you're trying to figure out if this lifestyle is uh, financially possible for you. It's really hard to give you um, an exact number of how much it will cost to buy and build a van because it completely depends on the type of van you buy and what you want your build to look like. So I'll just give you two different examples so you kind of have an understanding of what a range might be, but know that it really is incredibly specific. It comes down to the vehicle you purchase, the materials you use, the things you put in your build, if you do it yourself, if you hire professionals, all of those things are going to um, completely shift your budget from either very affordable to very expensive. You absolutely can live van life on any end of that spectrum. Very, very, very affordable, very low cost to very high end and very expensive. So just like when you're uh, thinking about any other living option, it really depends on what will suit your need. So on the lower end, if we're talking about um, purchasing a used low, roof, used low roof van, having a minimal setup, let's say a cooler, using a water jug, um, or maybe even a water jug with a foot pump, um, having maybe one AGM battery, you know, maybe one solar panel, very, very minimal setup you'd be uh, and completely DIY, you're probably looking at around $5,000 to $10,000 in total. Again, this is for a really minimal build where you do all the work yourself, using a lot of salvaged and repurposed materials, um, purchasing a lower cost vehicle. On the higher end, if we're talking about a uh, high roof van, a professional build, a lithium solar, a lithium battery system, multiple solar panels, uh, nature's head composting toilet, an awning, a roof rack, a ladder, you know, all of these fancy bells and whistles, you're definitely going to at least start at $30,000 for the build itself before you've even purchased the van. Um, my van is about in the $70,000 range for the vehicle itself and the build and having someone else um, do it for me. I have some higher ticket items, um, including a lithium battery system, a nature's head composting toilet, ladder, roof rack, uh, awning. So those things do add up very quickly. And um, most of those components, each component is in the uh, at least $1,000, if not in the thousands of dollars. What I would recommend when you are trying to figure out um, what your budget is and if you can afford it is really just to sit down and look at all of the different things you want in your van and then one by one go through those items. So let's say um, you know that you want to cook. So look at all the different fridge choices and sit down and decide what is the happy point between the lowest cost thing, aka having a cooler, um, and the thing that you would be happiest with. So like if a cooler is the most affordable choice for you, but you'd be really, really miserable having to deal with ice, then look at what the next jump is and try to budget for that. So maybe, um, you know, a lower cost kind of converted dorm fridge, then you'd want to look at your solar setup. Okay, you know, what are your power needs? How can you size your system? And just go through each component to get a number that seems pretty realistic. And then you have a good starting point for, um, figuring out your savings and what and when you can make the leap and move into a van. It's also important to remember that you don't have to be in like your ultimate dream van to live van life. Uh, you 100% can, if you ha already have an SUV or a minivan or something that you can car camp out of, you can start with that, you know, set up a camping setup in the vehicle you have and drastically reduce your living expenses so that you can save money to get into a different rig or purchase um, a used already converted van and live in that for a year while you decide exactly what's important to you and where you should spend money and where you can save money. So how much does it cost to live in a van? You know, not talking about the van itself, but you've already got the van, you've moved into it, what should you be expecting for your monthly budget? 
And this, like everything else in this course, it really, really depends. Um, in particular, if you're going to be traveling, your costs will fluctuate greatly based on what state you're in, how fast you move. So for example, let's say you're planning to spend the fall um, chasing beautiful leaf change and you're gonna go up and down the East Coast, you know, from Maine down to Florida. The East Coast has a ton of toll roads, especially up in the New England area. So you would want to budget more monthly for that section um, for tolls, for things like campsites, because there's less accessible public land on the East Coast because it's more densely populated. Um, and if you're moving around a lot, you'd want to budget more for gas as well. In contrast, if you're planning to spend a few months out in somewhere like California or Nevada, you wouldn't really need to budget for campsites because there's ample free parking on public land, but gas prices are considerably more expensive than in other parts of the country, um, frequently in the five to six dollars per gallon range. So you would definitely want to have a much larger budget there, but you wouldn't need to really have uh, much, much in your budget for tolls, except maybe the occasional toll bridge. When you're looking at your current budget living in a traditional house and you're trying to figure out how it will change when you move into your van, there are some new items that you may not be budgeting for already and there are some items that you'll be able to remove. So some of the new items uh, will either be gas if you don't currently have a vehicle or perhaps more gas because you'll be traveling more as well as tolls, possibly campsites, uh, a gym membership if you don't already have one, Laundry, if you are used to having a laundry facility that is free and in your home, you'll now need to use a laundromat. RV or auto insurance. You may want to have a more robust um, hotspot or data plan on your phone, which could cost more money. And you also may want to join some type of uh, RV membership program, such as Harvest Host or uh, AAA Roadside Assistance, Passport America, um, there's a bunch of different things and you may decide that you don't need any of those. You'll also be able to eliminate costs in a lot of categories. You will no longer be, pay be paying rent or a mortgage. A lot of people in the van life community consider gas their rent or mortgage payment. So that's a pretty easy thing. Let's say you want to set aside um, $500 a month for your mortgage or your rent payment. And now you can just switch that to say $500 a month for gas. Um, and that number, it really, again, depends on how much you're driving. I would say I budget um, between $300 and $500 a month for gas when I am actively moving on the road. Other things, you no longer will have a utility payment, though depending on where you get your water, you may um, end up you may end up purchasing water occasionally, but all of your electricity and everything else will come from the sun. You can cut the cord if you haven't already and get rid of that pesky cable bill, but you'll still possibly be paying for subscription services. You may be trading traditional internet for a mobile hotspot or a, a more robust data plan on your phone so that you can work on the road if that's something that you need. You may um, be able to get rid of a renter's insurance policy, though I personally kept my renter's insurance policy while I was on the road before I owned a home because the renter's insurance policy that I had also covered the contents in the van. So I just uh, used my parents' address as the place that I was renting from and kept that policy to cover my belongings um, outside of the vehicle itself. For me personally, a big budget cut was in the personal care category. Um, before I was living in the van, I worked a very traditional office job. So I purchased new clothing on a regular basis for work events. I um, had a just a, a generally more high maintenance, I guess, expensive um, self-care routine. I would get my nails done um, every couple of weeks, that sort of thing. So all of that you can completely, um, well, so a lot of those things you can eliminate from your budget in the van, though you absolutely should do all the things that make you feel, you know, your best self. Another category that I saved a lot of money transitioning from living in Washington, D.C. to moving into the van was eating and drinking out. So um, in the van community, when you meet up with other people, you would do occasionally, you know, go to a new brewery or a new restaurant or do kind of an eating out experience. But a lot of the times um, you are looking for a cool place to park where you can hang out, have a glass of wine around the campfire, that sort of thing. 
So I ended up spending a bit more on groceries and a lot less on dining and eating out because I didn't have those multiple times a week after work happy hours. Um, I didn't go out to the movies as much. Most of my entertainment living in the van comes from the outdoors and other free activities. And living in a city, I definitely spent a lot more money on those, uh, those types of things. In the end, your budget is completely reflexive on what your needs are, but there are definitely a ton of ways that you can cut costs moving into a, a van versus living in a traditional home or in an apartment. If you go into the finance section, I uh, in depth show you what my budget template looks like. It's there for you to download and use. I walk you through all of the, the different tools that I have developed um, that help me uh, save money, pay off debt and keep me on track financially for the life to keep this lifestyle sustainable. I hope that this has been helpful and that you're leaving this section feeling like you too can afford van life.